transcription. OK. We are recording. OK, thank you everyone for starting the, to attending the meeting tonight. I guess we started the meeting at 633. Uh, we'll just first do our natural uh, business here and. Uh, Peg put her minutes out last week. If everyone, uh, do, can I have a nomination to uh, uh, approve those minutes? A recommendation? So move. So move. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Tenio, aye. Okay, thanks, Bobby. Rugos, aye. Except please, aye. I guess we have to do that when we're zooming out this much. Okay, I think uh, I see, uh, John, you're on here as well. Yes, and I am, um, yeah, just been working with my internet at home right now. So uh, just pulling up my documents. So if you want to yeah, maybe okay. give, keep an update, give me a couple of seconds here, and then I'll be able to uh, I'll be, jump I'll be right glad in. To do, I'll be glad to do that. Uh, John, John and uh, Mike worked on uh, coming up with some new schemes for pricing as we asked for them. So tonight, what I'd like to try to achieve as a team is to review some of the recommendations and thoughts that they have, consider those. Uh, I'd like to circle back and see if Dave and or Mike Goddard uh, have any new numbers to project uh, what the impact of tax base would be just on the numbers that we had before. We had it up to a $10 million ceiling. I'd like to see what other numbers look like. And then the other thing that's important, I think next Wednesday, not tomorrow, but a week from here, I'd like to go to the select board and give them an update of where we're at and actually have a presentation that's pretty solid. It may not be final final. By the time we go to the town, I'm sure it won't be. But we sh I would like to have that as an update to them. Talk about numbers, dollars, and what's going on. The other thing I'll give you a brief update on is I visited with the uh, conservation. Which which meeting was that, Elena? That was the last Commu night, wasn't community it? Community preservation. Thank you. Community preservation with uh, Dan and Ann. And we were talking about uh, uh, the walking trails. Uh, Diane was with me talking about that and also the recreation that we'd want associated with this and looking for CPF uh, funds and how they could fund it and how we would do that. So I think those potentially will be two associated warrants going forward with us, but uh, they would be associated, not, not tied to. And I think to Dan's point, and I'll come back to Mike and John in this after this meeting. It would be good to take a look at the topography and laying out the, the recreational courts at the same time as we're doing the center because we'd save construction cost. And then Anne would need some design money to look at the trail possibility. But but it would be ADA. We discussed that it's not just trails in the woods that go over bumps and ruts. Uh, there were, I think Diane did a great job there. I don't think she's joined tonight, but she expressed how our walking team from the center goes to other towns to go walk. So that was an important piece for them to hear. And then she invited them along to come to any of those places if they wanted to. So that was good. And then she also talked about the bocce court that's currently there before pandemic. We used to have a Hopedale team that would come over and visit the Menden team. So the recreation activity is a great stimulus to potentially put teams together of surrounding towns to do pickleball, to do bocce, to do shuffleboard, or whatever else we'd like to do. So that's an update of what's happened since last week. We all had sticker shock, and everybody went to work. And uh, I see John shaking his head there. Are you ready to roll yet, John? Or do you need a little more time? Yeah, just give me uh, two more seconds. I'm just looking for the, the latest version here and then I'll I'll be ready to go, but thank you. Okay. Uh, as we do that, just one of the things that, you know, Peg and uh, Tom will be back from his trip, I think this week, I think, if I remember right. As I put together a matrix of all the different boards and committees within town, and then we talked about Peg and Tom and uh, all of us talked about going to visit other groups and get community input. And I'd like to uh, share out a list after this meeting to the team and we need to start putting dates and times in this. We have probably, when you think about it, six to eight weeks 
to get the information out. It's not a lot of time. So we need to really an aggressive schedule of getting on board meetings, getting on department meetings, meeting with Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, the Lions and the brothers, and have formal dates set up and times where we present. So hopefully we're going to have enough information from John. The first place we should go is to the select board. And then going there and presenting to them, and then we can unleash ourselves on the rest of the world. Right, As Amy's of uh, all of the uh, users of the building, and she's going to give it to me. Good, excellent, excellent. We have that list. Thank you. If we have time later, I'll show you. I'll send you a, a, a word doc I started just listening to ones I knew, but it's really just a it's a tracking tool. Who it is, who's going to do it, and when we're going to do it. I just go down the list. Alrighty. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, I sent you just a one pager via email with numbers on it. So when you want to get around to that, you should let me know if you got that. I will take a look at that. Yep. I should. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so here I'm, um, I'm superimposing some of these to I apologize. Um, I got it, Mike. OK. Got it. So we can share those numbers at the end. Thank you. OK. OK. You can take it away, John. Yeah, thank you. So there's one more thing here I'm pulling up. We spoke with John yesterday in our weekly call, uh, and he gave us some ideas. Peg and I have some ideas of what he may be coming up with. We haven't seen the final final, but they came up with some schemes to reduce the cost of the building. Yes. Um, so I guess what I wanted to start with, I have here um, numbers, and I apologize. I'm still still crunching a little bit of the numbers, but I think we're we're clear on the direction. I can walk through it. So. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share the screen. And I'm going to be looking at Okay. So yes, like Phil had mentioned, we we took a step back looking at scenarios of how we can look at this cost. And I think the first thing we looked at and we had been discussing as a team is the road that was how you entered the site and then also the future development into, into the lower part of the site. So we now, we broke that out as a number. Um, I think the idea is that potentially there'd be funding outside of this project to support to support that road, um, either as part of the future development for later down the for later down the or sorry excuse me for the for the site. Um, so we pulled that number out separately, and um, I think hopefully that will that will be something we can get um, through a separate fund. Um, the next thing we looked at was some more specific stuff to the building, and that is one, the solar. Um, the solar was in there as the budget, um, in that budget we've been reviewing, but I think there's opportunity for EPA funds for that. So, um, and that's part of the exercise, looking at items that potentially could be, get funded elsewhere. Uh, but that was one number that we had pulled out. The other number was um, something more granular was the siding. I think it was a it was a quick one that we could look at um, as a, a VE item, if you will, from our previous version, which we had in uh, a hardy siding. So we looked at vinyl, which surprisingly or not surprising, but vinyl is a less expensive product. So um, that didn't take away from the appearance of the building and kind of one of those easy ones we felt comfortable substituting or potential substitution. Um, and then the other item is 
more of a wholesome change, if you will, looking at the building and particularly the lower level. So I'm going to scroll down here and describe the thought process behind this. And we haven't put any sketches together. I think we wanted to open the discussion up to the team and just describe okay. the scenario. And I think the goal of this is to is to get to an understanding of when we're trying to get to a lower number, we really do have to look at making the building a little bit smaller. Um, and I think the cost effective way to do that is eliminating this lower level area where you're digging out into the site pretty significantly. And the cost that's incurred is really these foundation walls here that are essentially retaining walls. Um, so the thought is that this lower level, we would just remove this area. All the programming would still remain. It would obviously have to get reworked into the plan. But the thought is that this lower level, there's no access here. It would be a slab on grade. And again, we, we spoke with the estimator to get an, an understanding of what that exercise would cost. Um, and there is significant savings in it. So that's why we we thought that would be a viable solution. And quite honestly, this area, um, yes, additional storage is great. Um, but there's a lot of circulation to get to these spaces. The staircase would, would be able to be removed. Um, we would have to relocate the elevator and the staircase. And then the game room would, um, and the bathrooms would just have to get relocated and ultimately get a little bit smaller in size. So with that being said, that's those are the scenarios that we see in terms of reducing the cost without going to, um, with exception of removing this low up, without going to a more significant, wholesome design change. Um, so I have the numbers and I, I have some of them in Excel, but I wanted to start with um, the cover sheet. So what we're doing is the first number you see here, the 5 million. Um, and I think what will be helpful is we'll we'll provide a, uh, a breakdown of this, a more formalized breakdown to circulate electronically. Um, but for discussion purposes, this number um, here is excluding the solar, which the solar number is 175,000. And then the, the substitution from that hardy siding to vinyl is 150,000. Um, and then as we continue through the, the road, you'll see here the, the road is eliminating that, essentially not eliminating it, but taking out of the number is a million. Um, and the other number, the whole scenario of excluding that lower level um, in discussion with the estimator was 900,000. So between the siding, the solar, the, the lower level area that would all be infill and retainage, and then this, the, the road um, gets, us, gets us to that 5,359,000. Forty four hundred thirty four dollars, um, and well, that sorry, that's including the site work too. So the site work there is that's that's the exclusion of the million. Um, we did also discuss the exclusion of the garage. I know the chief had discussed that being a project because it is just a, a wood framed three bay or two bay garage, um, but that's something that I think could be done at a less expensive cost um, if so if that was done separately from the project so um, taking that following that number down here um, and like I said I, I want to update these and I have these here but this gets us to seven million um, or the total between the building and the site work and then as you see now that these numbers are a little bit lower our our percentages based on those get reduced um, so I guess what I'm going to do is scroll down here. All these numbers are just updated based on the percentage. And like I said, I'll, I'll formalize this electronically. But for discussion purposes, again, this this number based on these updates gets us to 10,800,000. Um, and obviously that takes some, some uh, significant change just to we would have to remove some of that lower level and rework some of that area. Um, which I think is certainly doable. Um, 
with minor s sacrifices and storage space. But that number, yeah, that that's your 10,800,000 for the building. The other items that we've discussed in the meetings, but it hasn't been on this document, are these two items highlighted here. We have our soft costs, um, including FF&E, and that's what this number is. It's, uh, it's a million dollars, 1.7, and then owner contingency. So this is once the project is complete through construction documents, with the, there'll still be additional contingency uh, tracked through the project. Um, but that being said, this, this contingency specifically, this is just the contingency that the estimator carries based on the, the current design of the building. There's a lot of unknowns, um, but ideally this number would go to zero, but realistically it's once you go through CDs, you just want to be certain that they're, we're not missing anything. So um, there is potential once whoever the firm has chosen to do the drawings that this number could go to zero based on that. But again, it, it it could go up, but this is the number to cover that unknown through the design process. Um, Just on that point, John, that's, and, and reflecting on the Upton experience when we visited with them, their contingency came in, Peg, I think it was around 5 to 7% rather mm -hmm. than 12%. Yeah, it was, it was lower can, than John and Mike's. Yeah, it was lo lower than 12%. So Correct. If, I, if I understand what you're saying, the owner contingency that number, if it were at 5%, would be $626,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so oh. no, this, the owner's contingency yeah. is, that's once you get into construction, you carry a contingency. This contingency is that we are at schematic design. You know, we they're, they're doing estimating based on sketches and very basic information, right? So that, so that in order to ensure that you get the building you want, that money is there. And what happens is that the 3.8 and that, you may use it, you may not, but that's ensuring that you get the building that's here once we get into design development and CDs. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the upper, the upper. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's 12%. That 12%, correct. that doesn't necessarily, it doesn't, it, you may not use all of it, but you're going to use some of it because, you know, we've provided as much information as we can, but until you've got, you know, a 400 page set of construction documents or the project starts to be fully developed, you can't do a real accurate estimate. I mean, that's and you because you're going to go to the town to get, ask for money. You don't want somebody to say, oh, we've only got three point yeah. eight million. We really need another two hundred thousand. Can't yeah, do it. Fair. So this okay, is so kind of all the all those contingencies say that, you know, there's a little bit of leeway here to make sure we get what we want. I have a question cool. for John Ram. When you yes, talk about bathrooms, you're talking about retaining the same size downstairs because we, I believe they're size for handicap accessibility because we would be the emergency uh, place that people would go. Of course. <laughs> yeah. About? Yeah, you are correct. Like, yeah, this these bathrooms would maintain their accessibility and and their size. So. Um, to your point that in that scenario of relocating this program, these bathrooms would stay the same size. Um, that's correct, yes. Okay, hey, in, in, interesting enough, uh, in looking at the design with a different design person who happens to be close to me and does this for a living, uh, and putting you know plumbing walls together and all those good things she discussed with me, those bathrooms could potentially fit over there by the game room area and the game room, because we're regaining the upstairs well that's no longer there, mm -hmm. could that that room could effectively on the first floor be replicated upstairs. Exactly. Yeah. So to your point, I think there, I think the 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 scenario of removing this lower level, I think Mike and I both feel confident that we could we could make this program work within that and. I think the conversation is is just that to realize that there is a million dollars worth of savings there if if we do remove this area of space on the lower level just based on the retainage wall. So I think we can definitely make the design work. Um, it's just realizing that that's what it's going to take to get that number that, down. 
That's what we do. I mean, right. right yeah. So this was putting a stake in the ground. Now we've got to try to reduce the cost and how are we going to do it? And there's going to be some compromise, but all the program spaces somehow need to be there, whether they're reduced in size or whatever. I'm going to raise the hand. I hope it's Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Elena? Yeah. So actually, I have a, a question and it, it somewhat goes for Amy also. So looking at this possible like so if the storage space is reduced or some space needs to be reduced on this lower level, would it be feasible to have storage space in the uh, detached garage? Would that be like a lower cost to have some storage space in that structure? So it is. I think you know, there's a lot of possibilities. I don't want to redesign the building tonight. Um, this is about where can we where can we get this out? We know we got to keep this there. One of the things that you know, as you look at si similar size senior centers, this building has a lot of storage in it, right? And I mean, if I, I looked at I looked at several others just this morning, and we're over. We have way too much storage. You know, I mean, we've got we need to provide storage, but I think we're heavy on storage. The other thing that I think you have to consider is that. You have this food pantry. The town's food pantry is in the senior center. Mm -hmm. And that's accounting for space that most senior centers don't account for. So, um, but I think, but I'm looking at the size of this, and I think, you know, we've got to look at some of these sizes and tweak the sizes, but I don't, you know, we can't redesign it in this meeting. We need to get to a number and say, okay, now we've got to make a building that works for that number. And there are going to be trade offs. There are going to be some trade offs. Go ahead, Peg. I wanted to see if Amy had any uh, input on this because <laughs> I know value storage space, because we don't have it now. And we've got two um, buildings, two exterior sheds that, that are filled to the brim. I don't know if she's still on or not. I don't. Yes. Yeah, I am, I am still on. Can you hear me? I can yes. hear you now. Put on sure. This. So, um, one of my questions would be, and I know you're you said you don't want to redesign it right now. I'm just curious where the um, ax stair access would be to downstairs because that's important. Um, but in terms of um, storage, I mean, we we have a fair amount of storage in this building for programs programming in the basement. Um, where you know we do a lot of running up up and down to to get our um, equipment and and other items, but. Um, I think if you're you're going to be able to save that much money, I mean, it's definitely makes it more attractive. Um, mm -hmm. I think we'd have to certainly make do with what we've got for storage. But, but again, my, know, my, to, I'm just curious we, where access would be uh, physically for stairs, you know, when you take that that one stair away. I We but, would have to figure that in. Yeah, right. I know. I, mean, I realize yeah, that. I mean, we're going to need to make that work so that you have comfortable access between the two floors. Um, you know, we're going to, I think at some point, you have to do a little bit of inventorying of, of what you are storing. And that some of it, because you've got more space to keep it in, in the spaces where it's used, right, it wouldn't have to be the running up and down to get it mm -hmm. as much. So there's a certain amount of that. But again, you know, as you could see, this becomes easily becomes a $14 million project and we're trying to get that down and there's yep. going to be some compromise, but there's certain things we have to provide, right? And we're going to have to figure that out. I question, I do question, you know, this the food pantry and the size of it. And, um, and so, um, but then we need to store stuff for that. And that, you know, the fact that you are the only food pantry in town, um, you're gonna have to provide it, and that's gonna be, you know, that's gonna be a substantial number. It, it tends to grow rather than reduce based on today's economy. Right, exactly. <clears throat> so, but, but again, I, I think those are the things you have to consider. That I think this is going to end up being a ten to twelve million dollar project. Yeah, any thoughts from the rest of the committee? Input. Uh, let's go around. Maybe Lonnie, if you're there. Yep, I'm here. Um, I I don't have any input at the moment. Okay, Mike A. Um, as far as storage, I think storage we can deal with down the road. 
there's that's a huge piece of property there. Um, with a little luck, we can design this so that in the future we can uh, have fundraisers and build sheds, uh, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, to save a million dollars uh, is very attractive. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike G. Uh, nothing in particular. I think uh, what I heard makes sense. Um, I think the important thing is that I'm hearing programming stays the same and you're getting a little creative with um, more general space. So it seems to make a lot of sense. Okay. Dave, you've gone through this a couple of times. Well, not, well, maybe a couple of times, but this is your second time at least. What's your thoughts on what we're doing? Um, I agree with Mike A uh, for that area. Um, and, and we did it several times with our committee. We went through, I can't even tell you how many renditions from one to the next. And finally, we just had to say stop it. Luckily, we're not doing that with this project. Um, but if a million dollars for that area right there, that's pretty expensive square footage. Um, to Mike's point, we could come up with something later. I mean, for a million bucks, we could come up with a pretty big storage area compared to what the area is right now that, that we're cutting out. I have a question. How do you guys and ladies feel about the loss of the of the solar? We had part of our uh, uh, pitch to townspeople was with the solar, it was going to be cost saving. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I guess Peg, before anyone else jumps in, I just want to clarify. I think the idea is that the solar number would uh, was an item we pulled out of the cost estimate. It's still in there, but um, just Understanding that, that would be something that maybe we get EPA funds rather than it being something we ask. Got to get a for. grant for solar. Clean grant, for, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so I, don't, I think you, you always yeah. make the building ready for it, so that you know. And there's yeah. ways to raise money for that, um, but again, um, it's just a way to to whittle the cost down if you need to. I know Mike uh, A was uh, kind of opposed for putting it on the roof. He probably he wanted it out somewhere separately. Am I right, Mike? That, that's correct. The, the savings that we talked about for solar aren't so much in the building, this initial building cost. It's it's the maintenance cost down the road. It's it's the cost to run the operation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's when we explain it to the taxpayers and the voters. That's how we put it as as a savings in our maintenance and and cost to uh, operate this center. Sure. Thank you. Okay, well, let me let me throw out just one more thought. We talked in this number that where you reduce the, the garage is an element that we do later. Uh, so we're talking about a uh, half a million dollars roughly for the garage. Three yeah, bay it's... garage. Mm -hmm. And one of the bays were actually considered used for storage and things. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's the team feel about keeping that in the project or keeping it, excluding it? It takes it from 12, 8 to, or 10, 8. It takes it up another half million dollars. Right, yeah. And then the escalators, you just going to check that number too. It's half a million plus the escalators. Correct. And all the other add-ons, that's right. <laughs> All those other percent percentages get included if you write that. Correct. Yeah. So they they all get updated. And, but again, I think we'll we can show that more memorialized, and so we can at least see see what that does. So it's it's in there. Um, but obviously, I think we all we all know based on prevailing wages and that six hundred thousand dollars for a three bed garage is is expensive, but it's it's definitely needed. So okay. Uh, maybe we can, uh, you know, show it, just note it, but leave it out, and then uh, maybe have another rendition. It's a spreadsheet. I'm assuming you just plug it in, so you get a spreadsheet one, spreadsheet Correct. two, with and without. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So it sounds like the road is not a road; it's a driveway. Correct, off the of North Ave. So that's 
right? The the one million dollars is essentially removing that. So there would be a, a slight cost increase for the, the driveway. You'd still you'd still obviously need a driveway. So I guess this would be excluding all of that work um, there. So we would. Uh, I'll want to confirm that number, but we would need a driveway there. Obviously, it, it won't be a million dollars, and it wouldn't extend all the way down like we have it shown. Um, mm -hmm. But that will be. Something I just want to confirm on that. Okay. <clears throat> My question, uh, I think, I don't know if you guys were on when I started the session, but my goal is to go visit with the select board uh, the next Wednesday, not tomorrow, but uh, a week from tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Give them an update of progress and give them some numbers that we're um, we're pretty comfortable with for you know close to past one. It won't be the we might we could probably adjust the number a little bit for the warrant, but we should be pretty damn close to what we want to take to town meeting. Mm -hmm. So, do you have enough time? Because we're running out of time in some cases mm -hmm. uh, to get these numbers respond, get some verification. And uh, get back to us somewhere, you know, by the end of this week, mm -hmm. so that we can at least look at it before we go in. Maybe Monday at the latest. Yes. Yeah. Just so we're, just so we're clear. I think, I think we're going to need till Monday at the latest because I want to. I, I think we really, you know, we thrown these are all ideas that we tossed around with PM and C, and and we need to kind of formulate this and say, here's your number. That's what we're looking for, Mike. Right. Yeah. And we need to, and we also need to quickly put together, you know, this is what this is roughly what the floor plan for that looks like. Yeah. And then you need to then you can I think that's what you're going to take to the select board, say here's where we are we're at, here's the number, and get their reaction. And then we're going to refine everything based upon the result of that to deliver you the graphics and all the data to go with it. Yeah, I think and right behind the select board meeting, Mike and John and I told the team earlier. Uh, we need to start our communication campaign that goes across the organizations that use this. Amy's putting a list together with Peg, Peg mm -hmm. and Tom, and a bunch of us will go out. I want to take this message to all the internal committees and, and uh, departments. Mm -hmm. So sh right after that select board meeting, assuming a positive <clears throat> with the minor adjustments, you know, starting the week or two after that, we're going to go on a, a four to six week mission to go make sure we meet everybody and have open houses for people to come talk to us. Right. And then and so once you're done with the select board, we what we need to finalize the deliverables, if you will, which are the things, the tools you're going to use to go do have those meetings and say, here's here's what we've done, here's what it's going to cost, and here's what it all looks like, and here's what we'll get. I took a dry run without the cost to the conservation and preservation committee. Uh, just to get, let them let them know that we're looking for some funds there from uh, CPA uh, to for the recreation and trails, future trails, mm -hmm. which is outside of scope here. So, uh, and there's ways to work. And I could send you the slide deck that I use, but it's basically modification of one that you did, John, mm -hmm. condensing some of the historical stuff, honing in on the building benefits, and then targeting it to the audience that we were delivering to, which was the Conservation and recreation groups. Right. So, mm -hmm. okay. Um, hey, Phil. Yes. Just, just. I mean, I've I've heard a lot of numbers, right? So, the way I see it, between vinyl road and lower level changes, it's approximately two million dollars in reductions. Is that a fair statement, John? Yes. The yeah, that's correct. So, so what is the number of the project? Is it the 108 I'm looking at, or is it 108 plus the 17 and 600? Or like, what's the total? If we do the 2 million, yeah. what's the new number as it stands yes. right now? Correct. So that number, this is this is essentially the 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 bid number that contractors would bid at, and then these would be in addition to this number. So we so are going to add all three of those numbers together. Correct. Okay. Yes. That's 12.3, 12.4. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
And if we take a look, OK. Yeah, and I think to to the point that we kept talking about that 12 percent for the contingency through this design process, I think it's it's good to have it in there. But I think in the back of our minds, we know that that could depending on where the design goes, that could um, that could be reduced. Yeah, well, the goal would be to have that upper contingency not to explode, but implode rather, right? And, or well, try right. To and the whole idea is that yeah. ultimately the, this thing just you basically you're going to go ask for what twelve four, and that's all you're going to get, right? And so right. nothing can drive it over at that point. So these all these contingencies just are any risks that are out mm -hmm. there that that are are waiting that are yet to be resolved and that through the process that gets resolved now whether it goes away or whether it gets it used up the point is that the 12 4 becomes a number and you got to get a building that you can use out of the 12 4. correct and that's that's what ensures that so i i don't like to say that can go to zero because i yet to see it go to zero i understand that yeah, yeah. there's no question i understand that one I think, well, so what we're saying is 12 4 to 14 7 comparison to the last week's presentation. Yeah. Based right. on the things. Okay. Yeah. And I think, Phil, this is close to 13 2 right now. 13 right. 1, 13 2. It's over mm -hmm. 13, right? I'd say 13 is a fair number. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the other thing you can do too is that when this is done, you can see, you know, let's say the number's 13 2, you can say, you know, we got to figure out how to do this building for 12.5 and we're done. And that's the number we're going for. And we got to live with it and make it happen. Uh, I'm just using throwing that number out as an example, right? You can, you know, all these numbers can add up to 13.4 and you can all say, you know what, we're comfortable that 12.5 is going to be our number and that's where we got to live. Or 12.2 or, you know, something. Or yeah. 12, nine, 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 nine. Yeah. Keep it under that 13 number. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, that there is a there's reality in that. So it could be that you're gonna go to say it's gonna be 1275. That's it. However. Well, I appreciate okay. John. I mean, I know John went over with us yesterday and you could see that you had really made some changes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, I think excellent. excellent. I think uh, if you could uh, sharpen your pencil mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, what do you anticipate just for my anxiety and the team's anxiety? Monday, uh, new, new spreadsheets? No later than Monday. Yeah, no later than Monday. Yeah. We will have it all Monday. Yeah. Because we may work, have to work a little bit this weekend to pull it all together. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, no worries. I mean, we're here to do that, um, but we want to make sure it's got to be right and it's got to be so you can understand it and it can be discussed, you know, intelligently. Okay, with the current plans going to the select board a week from Wednesday, we're already on the agenda. Uh, would you, any one of you gentlemen, want to join us either remotely and or in person? Uh, I can, I can, I would like to be there. Yes. Okay. Okay. So that uh, is the 20, is that the 21st? Is that Wednesday of next? Yes, I believe it is. Yep. And that's a 6.30 meeting as well. Be there. Okay. Okay, with that, uh, uh, John, if you quit sharing, I'm going to share a document that, uh, that uh, Mike provided for a scale of numbers if that's appropriate and then mike you can walk us through that one what's the impact on the taxpayer share content pick a window that's my problem i always do that mail fill out look how about that okay uh, mike you want to walk us through this one sure yeah this is just a um building off of the original uh, scenarios that we provided um still waiting we're gonna, waiting on amortization schedules back from the bank but based on what we gave you last time we just extrapolated off the six eight and ten million dollar scenarios to expand it to 12 14 and 16 million 
Um, so that's the left hand column. And this is basically 30 year equal principle. We didn't run every 25, 15 year scenarios because more than likely this will probably be a 30 year uh, bond. And then across the top, you can see the same range of housing values from ranging from 100,000 over to the right to a million. Anything more than a million would be a little higher, but still gives you that same breakdown. So for six, eight, and 10 million rows, those are the same numbers you saw before. And then you can see if it's a 12, 14, or 16, how it increases at each uh, property value. Uh, Jody's statement on property value or the assessor's statement, we're at 670 is the average or something like that? Or mean? Yeah, generally most of the tax recap uh, numbers that uh, the assessors give the select board and we set the tax rate at are based on a $650,000 value. Uh, we just broke this down into, um, yeah, you know, that's fine. smaller increments, smaller yeah, bands. That's, that's fine. Actually, the bands are good. Okay, so that if we're looking at this, we're somewhere on the on the five hundred thousand. Well, let's say seven hundred fifty because of town. You're somewhere between four hundred five and four seventy two fifty. Yep. On an annual tax base. And once we get the numbers that Mike and John have, at, you know, once we figure out what that number is, we could just rerun all the scenarios. But more than likely talking to Jody, um, she's leaning towards looking at an equal principal uh, mm -hmm. payment plan, which, you know, basically is going to drive, you know, reduce our interest payments over the life of the term. Um, that may change based on other capital requests that may be coming in from both BVT and uh, Menden Upton. So she's she's looking at balancing sort of the the, the debt obligation across holistically all across all all potential uh, users. Okay. Okay, and then my my standard question for you, Mike, and I'm not I'm not sure if we do it before we go to the board or not. Is any other kind of funds to bring this number down from the thirteen? Or twelve nine 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 or twelve seven fifty, whatever we want to call it. Yeah, I mean, I think for the board presentation, if there's any more insight, whether in terms of any grant uh, grants we're pursuing, we probably want to capture that information. I think a use of ARPA funds to help reduce the cost has been uh, discussed pretty regularly with the board. Um, but I think if nothing else, it's a way to demonstrate what we can further reduce the debt obligation by looking at other sources, okay. you know, through grants, ARPA, et cetera. Possibly stabilization, you know, if, if we wanted to go that route or even throw a suggested and let the board and FinCom and folks decide uh, what makes the most sense. Okay, because that, that's part of the conversation I would like yep. to have at that meeting. You know, here's our number, but it, you know, from a grant standpoint, we've got things for solar, which just would put it back in rather than take it off. But there's the ongoing, uh, the recreation activities that we're looking to put around the building uh, would be uh, through through uh, CPA funds, and that was the stuff I presented last night. Yep. Uh, and we want to wrap those two things. I'll try to figure out how to put that together in here too. Okay. Uh, any other th thoughts from the audience at large? Nope. Now I gotta figure out how to figure out like if I stop sharing, I just close that, I think, right? No. The top of the screen, stop sharing. But I, uh, okay, hang on a second, please. Stop sharing. There we go. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> Lonnie, just a just a follow up. Uh, I give you a quick voicemail. Any further insight? I know we were trying to chase an earmark as well for the AD, ADA. Yeah, so I'll 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 follow up with them to see where they're at. Um, I mean, it was probably a little bit more promising before. Hopefully, it's still on the table. But with the governor shoving money other other directions, they're stealing it from. Yeah. <clears throat> places like these. Is there anything we can help or is there any other support you need to to make that happen or you got it covered? 
No, I uh, actually, I'll be, I was supposed to talk with Senator Fatman either this week or next week. So um, I'll, I'll make sure it, it's already on my list, but I'll uh, be sure to ask him about it. Hey, Lonnie, you've gone through this for a couple of shows as well, watching police stations and things. What's your thought about it, just in general, where we're headed? So, yeah, so with the police station, I, I kind of came in at the end of it. It was already done and in motion. Um, worked on other committees like the original uh like on the morrison drive one but that was a you know slightly different committee it's just going to come down to what what's the need and and how much do we want to ask for i mean that's there's no my recommendation go for the whole thing like like but i don't know that that's the right thing to do uh because maybe we don't get it approved but nothing worse than doing something now and then Figuring we we miss something later, and 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 then having to come ask for more money for it, uh, it's just going to be more money later. Uh, we, <clears throat> that's just my opinion. Of it. Yeah, I I hear you. I tend to lean in that direction too, but I but I think we need to try to do some due diligence to give some money back. I think. You know, there's always there's things like uh, we've seen communities do some naming. You know, if there's an organ, if there's a if there's a business around that could would be interested in having their name on it, there's a certain amount. There's some money for that. Um, there's abilities to do fundraising for some of the outdoor stuff. You know, the outdoor terraces and some of the outdoor stuff, or some of the furnishings or equipment. So, I think you know, you have that stuff that's out there. We also have the friends, and they are our, our fundraising arm. And I know that their focus is on uh, fundraising and getting funds. Susan can talk about that if she wants. Uh, but uh, we do have that as yeah. well. We've seen friends, you know, friends in some of the towns raise as much as $250,000. Um, That's a good substantial. And that, that can really outfit a lot of the area that defer some of that expense that we're looking in that bottom line below. In, in the interior stuff, the furniture stuff. Uh, FF and E, and you know, as I mentioned, some of the outdoor stuff. So in Walpole Mass, they, you know, we we when we do the outdoor terraces, we specify these bricks that are made out of you uh, recycled tires, and they sold um, engraving on the. So they sold the bricks, and you could get a family member or an honor of or something like that, and they raised all the money for the terrace by selling the bricks. So there's so many things that the you know that are that are option. I mean, it's 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 it is a drop in the bucket. But the point is that you could come up with a half a million dollars or more with a naming right. You know, the Walpole Senior Center is called the Walpole Cooperative Bank Senior Center, and they sold them the naming rights for that for a half a million dollars. I mean, not everybody has a, a business in town that can do that, but. There's those things out there that if you really put your mind to it, you can't, you can say you're going to try to do it. You've got to ask for the total amount, but everything you raise, you get back to the town and it goes right back to the debt. It goes back to the town. I'm not sure how it goes back to, hopefully it goes back to the debt. Yeah, I'm not well, sure how it structures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, Bill. Yeah, Bill, to, to Lonnie's point too, you, when you present next week, you may make, let's be sure we show how we got to wherever we get to mm -hmm. so yes. that folks can see change in design, the, re, the elimination of the roadway as an example to get to the number, because I think there might be more uh, folks uh, with the same sentiment as Lonnie saying, let's not be short sighted. Agreed. You know, and they may say, no, let's go for the, the whole thing as originally designed. So give them the opportunity to see it and and, and have that uh, point of comparison. OK, we'll step through all the terms. I, I think we'll go. Well, we're going to need to do a little of that for the site selection as well. Um, and then, I have kind of a crazy comment. Um, where it's where it's located right outside the historical district. And I understand that that's you know, you want to keep that in a historical thing. How does the vinyl siding fit in with that? Vinyl siding does well because we use a product peg that's called Certainteed. Um, it's a, and it 
it, it's, it is a really quality product. In fact, that's why there's only the savings is really not that incredible because it's nice stuff. We also install it with, with really nice trim so you don't see all the track. You know, when you have vinyl siding installed in your house, they have to put all this track on to receive the siding. When we do siding on a new building now, you can't tell it's vinyl siding. Well, that's it's good to know. I was just thinking, yeah, it's going to be right up center of town. Right. And I'm going to say, I am not a fan of vinyl siding, but we've started using this product and installing it with, with composite trim that's got a, a groove to take the siding. It looks great. Okay. Long -term, I appreciate Long-term maintenance and operational maintenance is easier on the vinyl versus a Composite because I think you'd need to paint the other one, wouldn't you? Heart, the so Harvey. we if we get if we go with Hardy, so the Hardy cementaceous is beautiful stuff because you order it with a pre pre-finished and it has a 30-year warranty on the finish. Okay. And so it's it's nice stuff, but I mean it's pricey. And part of the priciness of the of the Hardy is the installation. It's got to, it's got to be installed a certain way and it's labor intensive. So it there there is something to it. And so oh, we've done um, senior centers with Hardy, but we've we've started to do other a lot of other buildings with the vinyl, and it's nice stuff. Okay. Um, the only other things I had, I think we kind of covered what we needed. Through this week, we'll be putting a framework for slides, and I may tap each one of you every now and then to come up with with slide decks. And then Monday, your information, Mike and John will be helpful to round it out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm working on the use cases. People have provided me with a lot of use cases by room, because I think that question is going to say, why do you need these rooms? What are you going to put in them? So that use case piece will come together. Peg that list you get from Amy yeah. of all the groups that use. We can use that for our use cases. So uh, we've got a lot of work between here and next Wednesday. And I may be tapping every one of you along the way for a little help here and there. It's uh, it'll be a hard road to go, but we need, I think we're on track. We get it going, we get the warrant in, and we move forward. And when Tom comes back, uh, Karen and Tom and I will get together uh, with the communications because he's been away. Well, that's okay. I think I think we really need to get ourselves to the select board before we go out anywhere else. Uh, there's some difficulty with. With our timing, with getting it to the newsletter and to the, uh, uh, the Menden Upton newspaper for the March edition, I think we're going to miss that. Unless we do a special edition or special newsletter. We can talk about that offline, though. Okay. Uh, any new business or any other things that anybody would like to bring up? Okay, we're heading towards the town meeting, guys. Next week will be a big one. Yep. That's okay. It. Okay. Thanks everybody for your time. Thank you all. Good. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank okay. you very much. Oh. Thank you. Oh yeah. Happy Goodbye. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Happy Valentine's to you. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Make sure you wear your hard ears. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You needed your thing, Peg. Yeah. Hard and sweet, Peg. <laughs> okay. Thanks everybody. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks all. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye.